so it's my pleasure to uh, welcome you all and uh, it's it gives me great pleasure to introduce safdar gudus uh, from iac bangalore he his research focuses on non commutative geometry and today he'll be talking on group actions in uh, non commutative geometry so safdar please go ahead yeah you can present yeah, yeah. hello uh, welcome to the talk so uh, it's my pleasure to uh, to have uh, Uh, being invited uh, to give a talk, present a talk. So I'll be sharing the screen. Yeah. So uh, is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. Fine. So uh, no. okay. So welcome. Uh, so i'll be talking on uh, group actions in a uh, non commutative geometry so basically uh, we'll be talking how group actions uh, change changes the geometry of a non commutative space and uh, also the tools that are involved therein um, so firstly we'll uh, give a small uh, introduction or motivation to a non commutative geometry so uh, this is uh, uh, i mean there are different kinds of non commutative geometry now but i'm just uh, giving motivation to the differential geometry how it came into existence um, uh, so the motivation is basically based on the gilfan nama construction which says that uh, any commutative c star algebra um, is uh, basically uh, represented by uh, uh, a locally compact hauser space so this is the gilfan nama uh, uh, construction and uh, Uh, this uh, basically uh, given us uh, given us C-star algebra, commutative C-star algebra. We look at the spectrum, the set of spectrum, and there is a topology. Um, on the other hand, given a topological space, we look at the um, continuous function. Uh, so, uh, in this in the spirit of this uh, theorem, what we we may ask that uh, what about the dual space uh, corresponding to the non-commutative C-star algebra? So basically. This is a subalgebra of a bond of a bond uh, of bond operators on bond Hilbert space. So, so that is known. But uh, exactly how does it look like, and does it represent a kind of non-commutative uh, non-commutative space? Um, so we 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 uh, would like we'd like to try to understand that non-commutative space uh, by actually trying to understand this non-commutative C-star algebra. So this was the motivation to start up with, and, and that's how uh, we can say uh, this. Uh, that uh, one can introduce oneself uh, to this uh, non commutative to differential geometry um, okay uh, so we have some examples um, so firstly uh, the classical two torus which is very well known so we know that the classical two torus uh, is uh, basically uh, uh, you know the the plane mod the lattice and we have the coordinate functions uh, x1 x2 and uh, any smooth function on this uh, On this uh, torus uh, can be actually represented uh, this way, uh, uh, which is uh, 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 in terms of the co coordinate functions e to the power two pi i x one and e to the power two pi x i x two. Um, so we also should have um, uh, this uh, the, the coefficients decaying. Sorry, uh, hold on. Yeah. So we also should have uh, uh, the coefficients decaying. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, so this uh, coefficient should decay, uh, and uh, uh, it should decay uh, as a, a more than polynomial uh, uh, rate. And uh, this is the ex expression, uh, which is very well known. Um, so uh, this is the classical two torus, and uh, how uh, a smooth function on it is, uh, is uh, represented. Um, we'd like to naively, you know, uh, non-commuted, non-commutativeize it. Uh, To a smooth function on some non-commutative torus. Obviously, it's a one way to understand it. Uh, so basically, what we are asking now uh, is that uh, this uh, uh, these two these two uh, generators U1 and U2 now they do not commute, but instead they depend on some parameter, which is e to the power 2 pi i theta. And uh, uh, on the other hand, if we look at uh, you know uh, how this uh, should uh, change. Uh, the uh, the background lattice structure so basically it will say that you know now we, we should have uh, something like uh, x plus y on the lattice as something like theta uh, plus uh, y plus x so this uh, the lattice the background lattice is also now skewed 
and uh, we can uh, we can look at the uh, algebra itself so this is uh, now uh, not commuting uh, with its uh, generators and we can make it into star algebra okay um, so with this uh, star operation so we get a c star we, we get a star algebra we get a c star algebra norm and we can look at uh, this algebra co the completion of this algebra under this norm um, uh, uh, so 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 we have a c star algebra and this a, a theta infinity is a pre c star algebra which is not complete but dense and uh, it's uh, uh, it's very well known that uh, c star algebras in itself uh, uh, they, done, they are not interesting uh, as per their K theory. Uh, in fact, uh, those are vanishing. So uh, we shall be considering this pre C star algebra, and um, technically that can be looked as uh, you know um, that can be looked as uh, the 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 algebra smooth function on the uh, non commutative uh, torus. Okay. Mm, so 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 this is a, a kind of one generalization. There are many ways to uh, come to this non-commutative torus, but this is a naive way to start. Um, and uh, we we also have uh, something called uh, the algebraic non-commutative torus, which is uh, uh, which is a set of all such uh, which is a subalgebra being finely supported uh, on the lattice. And uh, this is also known as sometimes as in literature as quantum algebra. And this is the notation sometimes, and multiplicative Weyl algebra, and also quantum symmetric algebra. Uh, so uh, this is also interesting, uh, uh, and I'll let you know why. Because you know, firstly, it is in, in, independently studied by algebraist, uh, being an algebra which is uh, an associative algebra. Uh, it's also it also shares the algebraic and cyclic uh, cohomological properties with uh, the smooth algebra. So you know, we had that. Uh, smooth uh, non-commutative torus uh, but uh, uh, in some sense uh, this algebraic non-commutative torus or the quantum quantum tori so this captures all the algebraic and also the cyclic uh, co-cycles of um, uh, the uh, of the smooth uh, smooth non-commutative non torus and um, uh, also uh, this algebraic non-commutative torus has been used to study the non-commutative theta functions on another kind of non commutative torus. So we have two kinds of torus already. One is the smooth torus, which is A theta infinity. This is algebraic non commutative torus, which is A theta L. And also we have uh, A theta form, which is, um, you, know, uh, form, uh, you know, formal non commutative torus, which is basically one parameter def deformation of the, of the algebra formal functions on, on uh, the uh, uh, classical torus. So um, uh, this, this, uh, uh, this uh, a theta form is actually a, a very interesting object, uh, which uh, is also um, uh, which is also understood as uh, the limit of the uh, limit of the um, uh, compact non-commutative compactification of the modelized space of elliptic curves. So this is realized as the limiting point of the compact non-commutative, a kind of comp a kind of different kind of compactification uh, on the uh, modelized space of elliptic curves. And uh, people have been working on to understand the theta functions on the non commutative theta functions on the non commutative uh, uh, non commutative elliptic curve, which is also the uh, as I told uh, you that this is the, also the uh, a theta form or the or the one parameter deformation of the formal function form uh, algebra form formal functions on the torus. So, anyways, uh, little aside, uh, this is also an interesting object, and so is uh, the smooth functions. Um, so basically, what we are trying to do, we are trying to understand um, some of the invariants of uh, these these uh, these um, these uh, um, algebras, and uh, uh, there is there is a very nice uh, correlation, obviously, when we uh, you know, try to understand it from uh, different perspectives, and also when we compare with the results that are already known. Um, so uh, we have a few um, few um, in uh, uh, no. In, uh, invariant. So, firstly, this is Hochschild homology, a very well-known uh, invariant. Uh, so, we have uh, uh, so the nth Hochschild homology of an algebra, given any algebra, uh, uh, with coefficients in the by in an, in in a a by module or the algebra by module m is uh, is the nth homology of this chain complex, uh, which is uh, given by this map. So, this is 
basically uh, the bar complex uh, uh, you know we are looking at the 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 the, the, the standard uh, bar map and uh, this is the Hochschild homology uh, you know we see that the first homology uh, the zero homology is aimed at the commutator and also the first homology is uh, the the differential the so uh, f when a is uh, unitary and commutative uh, and in general uh, uh, you know this nth Hochschild homology uh, indeed uh, uh, are the n forms on uh, the algebra uh, given when the algebra is smooth commutative and a finite type so finite type means finitely generated smooth is again an algebraic property and commutative is one. so okay so so this means that for special commutative case in fact this indeed captures the uh, the the, uh, uh, the Safdar, uh, can you tell us what a smooth commutative algebra is i mean what is what what do you mean when you say an algebra is smooth so we have uh, so we have uh, a, a short exact sequence which has to be satisfied at each of these uh, maximal ideals uh, each, each of these prime ideals oh, so there is a definition of yeah. In, there's an algebraic definition smooth, being smooth, uh, being smooth. Yeah. Oh, or okay. in other, other sense, uh, the map from A to spec A, uh, spec A to K is uh, smooth. I mean, okay. smooth okay. morphism, what we have here. Okay, no, because I was wondering that you define the smooth A theta, right? That is no, 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 that those two are two different things, but yeah, okay. uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, Thank so, 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 this is the purely algebraic condition. And obviously, this is a way to capture the uh, capture the tangent bundle. So we have, you know, I mod I square in algebraic geometry, which uh, which captures the, uh, uh, the 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 tangent uh, uh, the cotangent bundle at a, a given uh, you know ideal. Okay, oh. and uh, so yeah, and we have exact uh, short exact sequence that has to be satisfied uh, for uh, to be smooth at that. Uh, um, so for example, the oh. prime ideal. Yeah. So the, these two are two different. No, yeah. Thank yeah. So these two are two. Different. Yeah. So so we see that for a special commutative case, indeed, the Hochschild homology is um, is uh, is capturing the differential forms, and uh, uh, we have another variant of this Hochschild homology, which is the cyclic homology, which is um, which in special case when uh, the ground field K contains the, the rationals uh, can be defined uh, in a simpler way. If not, if that's not the case, that uh, the ground field is not containing the rationals, then it has to be defined by the cons uh, uh, by complex capital B and B small b. The, so these, I mean, that's a very complicated, uh, not very complicated, obviously. That's a that's a little complicated definition of uh, cyclic hom homology when the ground field over which the algebra is defined does not contain the rationals. But here we are assuming, and we are working over C, so it's containing the um, rationals. So in that case. We can use the definition of Hochschild homology to actually define the cyclic homology, okay? And um, that's done by uh, the same complex as before, the same the, the, the same chain, chain complex as before, uh, mod uh, a cyclic operator, which is one minus t. Okay, so this is uh, similar to uh, this is the definition for a special case when ground field is containing the rationals is actually uh, giving us um, a similar a similar you know, kind of complex, but actually it turns out not to be. Um, but we'll see that later. Um, but um, yeah, for okay. So, uh, for example, given if uh, we consider the algebra A as the smooth, uh, the algebra of smooth functions on V, which is uh, small, V is a manifold, then it turns out that the cyclic homology is actually uh, you know can be is actually capturing the Dirac co cycles on that on that manifold. Um, so basically, uh, we can say the cyclic homology is is kind of and capturing the DRAM cohomological aspect of the non commutative um, manifold associated to a non commutative C star or whatever algebra. Okay, so this is, uh, I mean, just uh, I try, I'm trying to justify that these, these uh, Hochschild homology and cyclic homology are indeed generalization to a setting and not just mere, you know, uh, you know uh, commissioned uh, um, invariants. Okay. Um, so we have few results. So, so uh, I'm trying to understand the smooth um, non-commutative torus. So that's done by uh, refill. 
So what Riefel proved that two algebras a theta infinity and a theta prime infinity are moiety equivalent, which basically means that when someone is when two algebras are moiety equivalent, the K theory is on Hochschild homology and hence the cyclic homology also. So they are they are isomorphic. So classifying classifying two algebras up to moiety equivalence is also a good way to understand them. Okay. So he understood it as um, so basically they are in the same orbit of the linear transformation action. So that's like fractional. So we have, uh, you know, um, the map is like this. Uh, so basically, theta going to, uh, so for G being A, B, C, D, theta goes to A theta plus B by C theta plus D. So it's a, it's a, it's a general, you know, uh, the kind of uh, uh, fractional linear transformation. Uh, so this is how it's happening. So and the, both of them are uh, more equal and different only condition is there. And they also calculated calculated the projections. Um, so this projection is again one is the identity itself and another there are two projections one is so say one and there's another projection which is you know, not the non-trivial projection okay which is basically a smooth projection which they can uh, which uh, you know also refill got it and uh, Primson and uh, uh, school also got it so that's a smooth this, so this is a smooth projection okay in fact um, later we'll see that actually k theta of a theta l, so this is actually only z, z, okay. So this is because there's no smooth projection, okay. So um, so this is what has been studied already, and Cons uh, uh, also studied this, and uh, he calculated the Hochschild cohomology, and in, in his calculation, uh, in his calculation, the Hochschild homologies of these algebras got split up into different. Um, uh, different cases when theta was satisfying the Diophantine condition and when theta was not. So when theta was satisfying the Diophantine condition, um, the the cohomology groups were were that of the classical you know, torus, considering that there are two one simplexes and one two simplex. Uh, so so yeah, so that was the case. And uh, um, when theta does not satisfy the Diophantine condition, then uh, those two cohomology groups were infinite dimension. Um, one thing to note here is, you know, we have this, uh, uh, sorry, I think we should do this. Okay, we have this theta being irrational because if it is rational, that it, then um, this uh, a theta infinity for theta being uh, rational is same as, you know, on the uh, C theta, this. You know, this is, um, again, uh, uh, similar to this. Uh, in um, I mean this is actually moiety equivalent. So yeah, so this is uh, how uh, we are looking at only um, uh, irrationals. Okay, so for irrationals, this is how it got split over. Uh, but it turned out that uh, actually uh, uh, the cyclic homology whose definition we we had, um, so that was independent of theta. So in spite of having a very very uh, very uh, no. Um, strikingly uh, similar definition for cyclic homology it turned out that um, actually actually uh, uh, the cyclic co cycles were independent of theta uh, in dimensions obviously um, they depended on theta but the number of cyclic co cycles was not dependent on the number of Hochschild co cycles um, so uh, this is a phenomenon which was very much you know um, calculate uh, calculation wise it was evident but uh, no, why is this happening uh, was a, a sort of mystery, not much, but yeah. Um, okay, uh, cons also uh, computed the pairing of uh, computed the pairing of the projections of um, uh, of the smooth non commutative torus with uh, um, you know uh, the periodic even uh, periodic uh, periodic uh, cyclic uh, co cycles. So this is the uh, this is the uh, pairing also which he had. And um, uh, so we have what till now, till now we have an understanding of uh, the Hochschild uh, and the cyclic cohomologies co co of um, the, uh, the non commutative torus and also the pairing, which, which basically again is an invariant for the, uh, the, for the non commutative torus. Okay, so um, uh, on the other hand, if you go to the um, algebraic non commutative torus, uh, which is also, as I told, which is also called as quantum tori. A quantum torus so this uh, uh, i mean the projection is just simple which is which is you know uh, which was to be proved which was done by Mambus. but he also calculated the Hochschild homology uh, which again Hochschild homology is a little trickier and uh, 
but yeah he got it and um, uh, recently you know um, berest uh, jeramados and shantang uh, so they they competed uh, this picard group sorry for that uh, picard group um, picard group of this uh, algebraic non commutative torus and also showed that like what refill did for smooth torus uh, the two algebraic non commutative torus are more equivalent if and only if uh, they are inverse of i mean they are the same or inverse of each other so uh, so we have kind of obviously matlab uh, trying to understand uh, the picard group again for uh, an associative algebra is uh, i know yeah so it's uh, like invertible modules uh, yeah but uh, yeah i mean i don't i mean uh, i try to uh, generalize it to the setting that i'll be providing for what i did but uh, um, actually it's uh, i mean from for, from what what i understand uh, with group actions calculating picard group for these associative algebras is is very uh, you know is is not that um, uh, simpler uh, than what it uh, seems to be perhaps for me okay so so these are the uh, so these are what we have uh, what we had for um, the the smooth torus and also for the algebraic uh, torus uh, so we had that uh, we had the, those two homologies and also we had for the algebraic uh, torus uh, the picard group actually the picard group for the smooth torus is also known um, that's also in the literature um, okay fine so what we are trying to what we shall be doing today i mean talking today uh, now will be uh, trying to understand the orbi folds so what are orbi folds so uh, i should i shall start with the with the classical um, uh, manifolds and then uh, try to uh, we shall try to understand what's a classical orbi fold so orbi folds are basically the generalization of generalization of manifolds and um, locally uh, i mean so you have a linear action on uh, on up, on the manifold and we have fixed points and that gives rise to orbi folds for example we have s2 we look at the rotation and that rotation uh, fixes say any of the any of the hemispheres so whatever it is so it gives a tear drop like structure and uh, you know uh, that's no longer smooth at, at least at the point I mean, at, the, at the fixed point and there may be ramification there are ramifications at least for this case it is and generally it is so um, so we have different um, you know homological properties and also differential structure and all the characteristics also change so so this is a different kind of uh, space which is not exactly smooth um one more example uh, we have the classical torus two torus and uh, we have um, the that, that is I mean, that's the plane mod the lattice and uh, we um, look at the um, Uh, finite subgroups of S L two Z acting on uh, the torus. So, for example, Z two acts on the torus. So that gives again a sphere topologically, and that's uh, with ramification. So, 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 so basically, it's a, it's a different ma it's a different space altogether, which may which is not smooth. Um, so, so, so it's uh, so so we are trying to we we have derived a new space from uh, from an old um, old space which was a manifold. A new space is not, and um, this uh, new space has different properties topologically also. and also it's uh, is projective is projective uh, spaces are or be folds projective no, space no no projective spaces are not or be folds no okay 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 so um it uh, we have uh, an action of sl2z on 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 the non commutative torus whether it be smooth or algebraic or formal and that's given by this um in fact it's not uh, by chance that this uh, this kind of action is coming to existence actually there is a explanation to it uh, which was uh, which uh, which was done by sobelman and uh, uh, wodowski um I mean, they they actually not gave an explanation, but they said that there could be a probable explanation, and they I mean, it's not worked out yet, but yeah, that's what uh, is okay, fine. So so yeah, so this is and there exists a, a group action of SL two Z on the torus, and for example, we have you know on um, uh, Z mod two Z acting on it, which flips, uh, which inverts the generators U one and U two, and we can now talk about. Uh, Uh, orbi folds, um, uh, the smooth orbi fold, and also the algebraic orbi fold. So, so this is the technical definition how to calculate 
you know, a, a cross product cross product algebra given a group action so we have the c star dynamical system and from that c star dynamical system we have a rep representation uh, onto some kind of space and then we look at i mean we have this you know, uh, we, we look at you know set uh, we look at the group algebra and then we look at the completion of the group algebra in, in a certain norm and that gives us uh, um, the the the, uh, the 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 cross product algebra but in the case when we are looking at the algebraic uh, non commutators uh, cross product with a group um, action so so that's just the group algebra with certain uh, you know uh, with the general norm right so so that's nothing to talk about uh, regarding the completion so so this is how it is and that's uh, that shares the property uh, i mean that basically um, uh, you know says uh, that, that this 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 uh, cross product algebra basically captures the fixed points and uh, it's rightly uh, to say that this is indeed uh, an uh, in, indeed understanding the orbit fold structure on the algebra okay so 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 what has been done uh, so i'll just state the res uh, results so 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 this is so the, the homologies of uh, this group action uh, was uh, has been you know calculated or understood uh, so so uh, julie bottery she 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 tried to understand this for you know she, she tried to understand the zeroth homology and also um, oblomkov he he uh, he gave uh, you know uh, he gave the the case for uh, so what oblomkov did was he was looking this um, algebraic non commutator to torus as some kind of double affine Hecke algebra, which obviously I don't have much understanding of. So, yeah, but that's what he was trying to do. And um, yeah, he looked at the Zermatt 2 Z action on this uh, algebraic non commutator to torus. And he, he gave a partial list of what uh, results we have available now. And uh, this result, uh, this method, which gives a complete understanding, uh, does not involve any of the uh, tools that Julie Bottery or Oblomkov. You know, uh, did uh, an understanding uh, there on uh, computation, and also we have uh, an understanding of the cyclic or the periodic homology, and um, uh, so 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 the periodic homologies are you know they have one more co cycles than the, the Hochschild homology, and um, uh, again this is this is expected that for the special case when uh, something like Diophantine condition would hold for a smooth or before uh, this same result, these two same results should hold. Um, but it turns out that the cyclic homology is anyways the same for even for the smooth case. So as I, as I told earlier that even for an algebraic case, um, algebraic case, even for an algebraic case, uh, the um, I mean, even for an al algebraic non commutative torus, they actually capture the algebraic as well as the cyclic co-cycles and cyclic cycles of um, the smooth uh, non commutative torus and it's all before too. So that's uh, actually a recent work by my advisor Shang Tang and Sayan Chakraborty and Eugene Yao. So they have actually proved that uh, this uh, this group is uh, also um, the same as for the smooth case. So the cyclic one. But the Hochschild um, the Hoshi groups for the for um, for the smooth co smooth case is still unknown. Okay, fine. Um, so again, uh, this is for the cohomology. So we did, uh, we have now an understanding of the cohomology also. I mean, just these are the dimensions and all. Okay. Uh, any questions? I, I I don't know. I mean, I think I'm very uh, fast. I guess right. Any feedback? I don't. Know. Hello. Uh, the last theorem that you uh, said was uh, Hochschild cohomology, right? No, this is Hochschild homology. This first one, right? The first one was oxyl homology. After that, it is cyclic homology. Yeah, this is this is cyclic homology. So, so yeah. So this is yeah. for the for the for the algebraic non commutative torus uh, orbifolds. But as I told you the, recently, uh, a work by uh, Shang Tang, Sain Chakraborty, and uh, and um, uh, and Eugene Yao. So they have actually proved that these co cycles are indeed what I have in my um, in this paper. So these co cycles are indeed the uh, these cycles are indeed the cycles for the smooth case as well, smooth orbifolds. I mean, not orbifolds are not smooth, but orbifolds obtained by group actions. Smooth, smooth cross product with gamma also, you get the same result. Yeah, for the smooth non non commutative torus also. Okay. Yeah. And is and there any reason why one should only consider finite subgroups of SL2Z or? Uh, fixing points, I guess, yeah. 
I mean, if you if you don't, then you know you have a continuum, and that uh, the Q theory also vanishes. Okay. So yeah. So if I mean, basically, all these formalism is basically you're trying to understand the churn churn cons pairing. I mean, and that's the basic thing what people are trying yeah. to understand. That's like a, a kind of non-commutative uh, Arthur Singer Singer index. I mean, yeah. I mean, so uh, my, my my yeah. question is, what happens if I take, for instance, gamma equals the whole SL to Z? We will will I get something uninteresting or? Uh, I don't know about the homology, oh. but yeah, the K theory is going to vanish. Oh, oh, the K theory will vanish, is it? Uh, that's a yeah. For then the pairing will not happen, right? Because we are looking at the pairings of the. So the K theory, the K theory will vanish except for finite groups, except for yeah. those. And that's how. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a theorem due to Ekterhoff or who 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 proved that theorem? That. Uh, it's 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 a collaboration, I think, of uh, these. So you see here, uh, this is by Echerov, Luke, Philip, and Walters. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, and this is uh, what uh, the Hochschild cohomology of um, uh, of the um, Z mod two Z or before. I mean, these these are just the results, um, just the dimensions. Obviously, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll talk about the method which went into proving it. So the method is more more of a homological algebra. And, uh, and a mechanism developed by uh, Getzler, it's Ezra Getzler and uh, J.D. Jones. So they talk about the uh, paracyclic modules and decomposition of the Hochschild homology into you know, group homologies. So uh, Safar, uh, I have a question. I have uh, two questions. Could you go back one more slide, please? This one? Uh, one more, please. Mm -hmm. Is this one? Um, okay. Uh, and also you say something. Yeah, thank you. But you said Diophantine condition. What is the Diophantine condition on what, what does yeah. that refer to? I'm lost. Yeah, yeah. So so that's the Diophantine condition what uh, cons had. So you see uh, for a smooth, smooth uh, non-commutative torus, okay, um, when, we, when he calculated the uh, Hoshil cohomologies, so in that case, it turned out that uh, you know the theta has to satisfy the diophantine condition for the cohomology groups to be um, finite dimension, the first and the second. And that actually. And uh, can you just tell us what the diophantine condition is? What does it mean? Theta is not in irrational, satisfies the diophantine condition. What does that mean? So basically, this condition that uh, no, the uh, has to be satisfied that. Uh, oh, I see, I see, I see. You have written it there. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So the problem here in trying to understand the Hochschild homology for uh, smooth um, cross product with smooth uh, non commuted with uh, or before is basically that diaphantine condition, which basically arose. Because of the sh decay of the, um, we had the decay condition on the um, elements of the smooth non commutative torus, right? Algebra. That it had to decay more than polynomial time. I mean, more than polynomial rate. Do you remember? So we had. Oh, uh, yeah, actually, sorry, I'm that. a bit lost. It's. Uh, uh, yeah. So we had this here, right? You see? Yeah. We had this. So basically, this condition gave rise to the Diophantine condition. But in the algebraic case, there is no such condition because we're looking at all those. Oh, okay. Okay. So the diffeminant yeah. condition is for the smooth case, and uh, in the algebraic case, the diffeminant condition does not arise. It does not arise. And in the smooth case, what's happening is that the diffeminant condition is not giving giving any kind of uh, any kind of um, condition on theta for cross products. You know, uh, without cross product, we we got into the, we, we we had this short 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 decay in. You know, so, and this DK giving a uh, definite condition, but when we had a cross product, that I mean, there was no condition being. I mean, it was it became very. Uh, no, it, it became out of control to actually say that there is a condition on uh, theta to have it uh, to be finite dimensional for uh, smooth uh, smooth cross products. Yeah, yeah, and okay, fine. So so this is what happened for the. For, but but now what the uh, yeah, okay, fine. 
so um, this is also the churn cons pairing so as we talked uh, so there is a there was a work, there was a work done by uh, actually of luke phillips and walters which in which they basically um, uh, understood the the projections the projections of the cross product with all these four uh, finite subgroups of acid to z and um, they gave a list and if we pair so this is the churn cons pairing that we get for the z mod to z um, um, uh, z to z um, cross product of the algebraic non commutative torus okay um, so again similarly i tried to extend that result um, uh, to to other um, cases also trying to understand the cohomology so what we did was for the, for the first time was the just the homology so this is the cohomology and actually for the cohomology uh, the, the things become little difficult because you know um, um, even for the algebraic non commutative torus case in the cohomology we are not looking at a finite lat lattice we have you know we are looking at the dual so it becomes again an infinite lat lattice so yeah so so yeah there was some um, i mean not that difficult obviously but yeah there was some condition which had to be you know disposed of and uh, this is one of uh, the, the result which basically understands the same for z mod 3z to uh, 4z and 6z and also again we have the periodic um, cyclic uh, cohomologies and uh, again things were very coherent uh, to such an extent that even the churn cons pairing for the uh, z mod 3z cross product with the algebraic non commutative torus actually me, actually matched with the table that buck and walters had for the smooth case so partial table i mean their table was also partial because they still still we don't have an understanding uh, until recent of exact um, periodic cohomologies or co periodic co cycles uh, but they had a table, partial table, which, uh, and, and this, what the tables that I got for algebraic um, uh, cross products were actually, you know, encapsulating in some sense, except for the smooth projection, um, it was encapsulating the their tables. Okay, so this is all done for the algebraic case. Uh, this is this this what this is for the smooth uh, portal sphere. So so there is smoothness here and. Uh, Again, um, uh, so 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 it turns out that uh, there is a portal sphere. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I could have given the definition, but yeah, I somehow I missed it. Anyways, so 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 there is a non-commutative sphere, um, and uh, there are two kinds of group. Uh, uh, there are two kinds of Z mod two Z actions on it, and uh, one of them gives the quantum disk, and another gives the quantum real projective plane. And um, again. Uh, uh, I've tried to understand the you know the 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 the, the, the Hoshi um, homology. Okay, uh, so so this is what uh, for the uh, for the portal sphere is, and uh, again, I mean as we are talking about the group actions, so uh, so there is a um, so 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 I have also looked at uh, uh, trying to understand the the group action on. Uh, for example, DG algebras or differentially graded algebras. Uh, so actually, that was not meant to be uh, that I stop at DG algebras. But yeah, uh, currently uh, it's an ingredient to one of our project, which is with uh, Shantang and Chakraborty, uh, that we are trying to understand uh, the co-cycles. So basically, uh, this is a small paper, which yeah. So this basically says that uh, you know we have the infinity algebras and we have uh, a result by Getzler, which basically says that um, the 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 Cartan homotopy formula uh, uh, is indeed satisfied with for the infinity algebras and uh, whatnot. Um, uh, but uh, when it comes to the equivalent case, you know we have um, you know uh, in, uh, we have we have the we have the cyclic we have the cyclic cohomology. Uh, of the of the cross product you know, with a group action on a D, on a dg algebra uh, in fact in that case also uh, it's proved that you know we will have a cartan homotopy formula which is basically uh, you know uh, which is basically uh, trying to understand this each of these split, split uh, components of the 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 the, 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 the cyclic homology i mean yeah okay Okay. Now, uh, lastly, uh, almost lastly. Uh, okay. So, so, so the, uh, again, uh, using the group actions, we can understand the non-commutative Poisson structure. So, this was introduced independently by uh, Pink Shu and um, uh, Block and Getzler. So, they introduced this uh, non-commutative Poisson structure, which is basically basically um, a two co uh, two co cycle uh, of the Hochschild homology, 
uh, and um, you know such that uh, the bracket the getson haber bracket with itself is zero and uh, with that uh, the, we have uh, we have uh, a chain complex again and that gives us a pos uh, and, and the cohomology of the chain complex is is the is, is the is the poisson cohomology um, so so basically ping shu himself he calculated the same for the non commutative with smooth torus and also uh, shangtang and uh, uh, halbot they 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 gave a, uh, they gave a uh, they gave an understanding of the same for um, for c infinity m cross product with a, a, a group action um, this the m has to be symplectic and the g has to preserve the uh, the symplectic form uh, and they gave some uh, they gave the necessary and sufficient condition uh, for uh, you know uh, for a two cycle to be poisson um, so basically what we are now in, in this page what we are uh, what we are discussing is basically non commutative poisson structure on uh, classical orbifolds right so one can ask again what about the uh, non commutative non commutative poisson structure on non commutative orbifolds okay so uh, so they uh, so 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 sara with his spoon and uh, show so they so they computed the gestern haber bracket for a discrete group acting on quantum symmetric polynomial algebra which is the same as what we had but in a higher dimension uh, and the, but their 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 group action was diagonal so that's by you know ui or whatever the generator going to some scalar times ui um, so they computed it what uh, i have done in one of this small article is trying to understand uh, this uh, Poisson structure of homology by this uh, SL2 Z action, which is not uh, diagonal, obviously. You know, um, yeah, this is not diagonal on the uh, on the algebraic non commutatorist which is same as quantum symmetric polynomial in two variables. Uh, and lastly, uh, yeah, the lastly, uh, lastly, it is you know uh, quantum Kummer surfaces. So basically, these are higher dimension as what as, uh, with a spoon and Zoe talked about. So this is higher dimensional. Um, non commutative torus or the quantum hyperide um, so um, so 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 the classical kummer surfaces so where the, um, their their cohomologies uh, were you know uh, supported only on e even uh, uh, dimensions i mean even dimension cohomologies were not vanishing and that was done by spanier uh, very early so what we have seen here that actually for the quantum kummer surfaces also the same thing is happening and also the same uh, uh, similar, uh, no, similar uh, uh, Hochschild and cyclic groups are uh, coming into existence. Oh, no, this periodic homology is a, is a corollary. That's not a big thing, actually. Uh, actually, uh, the main part of this is uh, trying to understand the Hochschild homology. So uh, it turns out that even the Hochschild homology is uh, same as what it was expected. Uh, okay, so uh, finally, uh, uh, further what, uh, what we are doing, so uh, we all, uh, I mean, except for that portal sphere, everything was, uh, uh, ex everything was algebraic uh, in nature and not smooth. I mean, that we talked about the algebraic non-commutative torus and its um, um, cross product with um, group actions. Um, but what about the general uh, smooth non-commutative torus with the group action, uh, with cross product with group group action? So, so it, it's. Uh, the techniques that we that we were involved in um, trying to understand um, the uh, algebraic ones uh, are not I mean they do not extend actually because of the Diophantine condition is not you know, we are not able to actually assimilate what the condition on theta should be so um, uh, using uh, partially that technique and also uh, an, uh, a tool of Gaussmannian connection we are trying to understand uh, we are trying to understand the explicit co cycles of um, the periodic co cycles, uh, periodic cyclic cyclic co cycles of um, uh, the group act, uh, of the cross product uh, cross product of a smooth non commutative torus with with a, with, a, with the finite subgroups of S L two Z, and uh, this is a um, the joint work with uh, Professor Shantang and Sanjay Chakraborty, and um, also we have a formal uh, this uh, non commutative uh, formal torus which is. As I told, which is uh, which is uh, uh, something in between non commutative algebraic torus and or not between, but yeah, uh, different from algebraic torus and smooth torus, um, which is basically, um, uh, in fact, we cannot say exactly proved by uh, Sobelman and uh, Ulodowski, but um, you know, they have actually outlined that they it should be 
you know, a kind of non-commutative compactification of the modular space of elliptic curves. So this involves a little of, um, not a little, a lot of algebraic geometry. So what they do is, uh, for every uh, elliptic curve, they consider, or uh, they uh, they consider the you know the category of covariant sheaves on it, and obviously that can be recovered from it. Uh, that can I mean uh, that can recover the elliptic curve itself using the um, von der law. And uh, so, so they can kind of predict that they, the the limiting points under um, this uh, topology. I mean, yeah, should be should be the uh, non commutative torus. Uh, um, and their conclusion is basically a little vague because they say that because the SL two Z action extends from the elliptic curves to uh, to the uh, to the non commuted uh, to the to, to the limit points, so that those limit points have to be non commutative torus anyways so this is uh, i mean obviously very slow work because i don't have uh, much background in algebraic geometry so this is a very slow work in progress with professor dipendra prasad so we are trying to understand basically a uh, little work has been done by um, uh, polishchuk and where and shorts where they have understood the theta functions and uh, yeah theta functions uh, on this uh, non commutative torus so we are trying to understand the modular forms and the group actions uh, on uh, how they extend exactly you know, on the non commutative torus as the limit points of the modular space of elliptic curves under this compactification. And um, what we had was the Cartan homotopy formula, uh, which was proved for A infinity algebras, but uh, trying to understand it for the equi equi equivariant uh, group actions on uh, for the equivalent um, cross uh, uh, cross uh, the cross product of a, a, a infinity algebras with group uh, with uh, groups general groups in fact um, uh, is uh, is again a problem and that uh, so that will extend what I did for uh, DG algebras and uh, that's uh, 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 that's also one of the uh, one of the problem that I'm working on. So basically, and uh, that formulation of equivalent e equivalent I mean, of how these capital uh, how these uh, Hochschild and cyclic cohomology uh, operators you know, they behave um, behave uh, with the group action that was done by um, Getzler and Block. So so yeah, we have to use those mechanism to actually construct uh, an equivalent um, Cartan homotopy formula for uh, infinity algebras. Yeah. So I think I was too fast, but yeah. Hello? Yeah, okay. So uh, I have a short question. Mm. Uh, so you have computed the cyclic cocycles, right? The cyclic cohomology and things like that. So is it possible to write down spectral triples realizing those cocycles for each of those cocycles? That no, no, in fact, you know, spectral triple for non commutative torus is also, you know, for a special case, I think they have real torus, I think, right? No, the algebraic torus. I mean, you have written this table, right? That uh, no spectral so triple. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Each mm -hmm. spectral triple will give rise to a, a cyclic cocycle, right? Using this local index formula, so uh, it will give a cyclic cocycle. So my question is, if the cyclic cocycles that you got mm -hmm. does it, uh, come from a spectral triple, as it is it possible to realize them as no, I think because because these uh, so, so co cycles, uh, yeah, you have asked for cyclic, so perhaps I cannot say much because you know because even the smooth uh, orbifolds also share the same co cycles. But oh. actually, yeah, given the fact that we don't have exact understanding how you know, these co cycles are also shared by smooth co cycles, that's an ongoing work. So once oh. we understand actually that how the smoothness. Is, because if you if you're considering the algebraic case only, this I mean there will be something like null nothing spectral triple or whatever it is. It will be finite dimensional, right? Okay. Yeah. For the algebraic case, it will be finite dimensional. But since those co cycles are also co the co cycles of the smooth case, so we have to actually see how they are coming in the smooth case. So once we have explicit co cycles using this Gauss Manin connection in the smooth case, so perhaps we can go the other way around. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the, you have this uh, also the results for Z2, Z3, Z2, Z3, Z4, Z5, Z7, I think, I don't know. You have those four groups, right? Four cyclic groups. So it's Z4. a computation. I mean, the, the, Z4, Z6, yeah. huh. the, the, the computations, uh, is it different for each cyclic group or 
is it a case by case analysis or is it it's, a... it's basically you know uh, for a, if you're considering the algebraic algebraic non complete torus so this should, 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 should. Ah, sorry for that right okay huh. So, 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 if you're considering the algebraic non-commutative torus, so basically, what's happening? Let me switch it off. That's much better. So, what's what was actually is happening is there is oh no, once you do something on the algebra, something is happening on the lattice. Okay. You know, yeah, we have this lattice, right? Which is now skew, skew, skew kind of lattice. So, something is happening on the lattice. So, for each of these, uh, each of these groups. Uh, there is a there is a change in the lattice and one has to really understand how this lattice is working on okay. and, um, yeah and with that and then trying to understand uh, the 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 co, the co cycles because you know in the, co in the, the proof is a case, case by case exhaustion is it huh? the proof yeah. is a case by case ex exhaustion yeah, it's, it's a case by case case by case and in fact in, in in fact within the group also each of these elements are also case by case okay okay thank you that's my question mm -hmm. Any questions? Anyone else? Thanks for the wonderful talk. Yeah. Any questions, please? So maybe you can close the screen. We would like to congratulate yeah. you live. I mean, seeing your face. Yeah. So you were not able to see me? We were seeing the slides, actually. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. I have been. No, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I am. I am able to see you. Sorry. Yeah. No, that, that was not your fault. Actually, my camera was. No, no. My... I have also pinned you on the screen, so uh -huh. that's also another fault. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions? Okay. If not, then we will thank the speaker again. Thank you for the wonderful talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So should I uh, oh, with the, uh, leave, I think. end the call? Okay. 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 I, I will end the call. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks everyone for coming and thanks Avdar again. Thank you. Okay. Nice to be here.